Hey everybody, it's Richard Seaman coming at you from the Pacific Northwest. How are you today? I just wanted to um, say hello and I hope that wherever you might be today that life is going well for you. My name is Richard Seaman and I am the founder and director of Seattle Life Coach Training and SLCTOnline.com. And I am a transformational educator who trains people to transform lives. We are a 120 hour life coach training program in Seattle and also on campus. And so if you're interested in knowing more about me, you can go to seattlelifecoachtraining.com. So I wanted to just um, bring you some new possible information today for you and allow you to see what's going on in the world in a new way. And I feel like what's really important right now is that we really need to go from fear to possibility. And I know that the FEAR acronym is false evidence appearing real. So when we think about the idea of false evidence appearing real, we have two options because fear is actually an illusion. And the only thing that's really real is love. So I want you to think about that concept that false evidence appearing real and that everything else is the fear part is really an illusion. And what we have the possibility of doing is going from fear to possibility. So today I'm going to be teaching you the 11 guiding principles to manifestation. And I like you to know that when we talk about the fear model, that we have two choices in when we, when fear shows up in our life and we can face everything and rise, which means that we're going to face it and we're going to rise above it and transcend it. Or the other option is that we're going to forget everything and run. And so I think that we're in this place right now in the world that we have an opportunity to really face everything and rise. And so I'd like to invite you today to spend some time with today and really look at what's possible for you in this, that the fear is an illusion. Yes, it may be true of what's going on in the world, but really we only have one option and that's to choose to see it differently and to see ourselves in the possibility. And more importantly, we need to allow ourselves to not get caught up in the fear of the world and all this energy. So what I thought I would do today is spend some time working with you on the 11 guided principles to manifestation. I feel that manifestation right now is so, so important that we spend time in that and that we look at what's possible in our life. So let me go ahead and begin. So I want you, if you want to, you might want to take out um, a pen because this is the opportunity for you to be write down some of these things. And I am going to go ahead and put these 11 guiding principles in the chat box when I have an opportunity to do so. And if you'd like to copy and paste those, that's possible for you to, for sure to do. So I have been teaching the 11 guiding principles at Seattle Life Coach Training in Seattle for the last 10 years. And I am a really good manifester. So one of the things I wanted to share with you is that I am a really good manifester and I'm going to just copy and paste these now. And the first guiding principle to um, a manifestation is the ability to be able to, I just put it in the comment box, is the ability to really claim to the universe that I am a really good manifester. And it's really important to be able to really say that with purpose and power, that we don't want to um, say, I want and I hope and I wish, um, that you really have to claim it. So what I believe is that the universe is a doing machine and only knows to do what you tell it to do. So the possibility here is that what if you were to say right now that I am a really good manifester? And then the universe says yes back to you that I am a really good manifester. And when we begin to like, create this possibility for us and the universe begins to move into action and begins to um, co-create your life with you and the universe says yes you are a really good manifester and begins to take that energy and begins to bring that to you as the purpose and possibility in your life so that is the first uh, guiding principles to the 11 guided principles to manifestation so let's talk about the second one and i'll put this in the comment box really quick so you can uh, read these. And the second one is your thoughts and your words are containers that hold your future. Therefore, be very selective in what you say. 
So I want you to think about this. I'm going to sp speak it to you in a couple different ways. So if your thoughts and your words are containers that hold your future, be very selective in what you say. So the possibility here is that imagine that the universe is reading from the thoughts that you have in your head and also the things that you're speaking out into the universe. And so if you could think about this idea that everything you think and everything you say is going to be put in a container and then thrown out into the universe to find itself and then to bring it back to you as your reality. If you knew that, you would be very, very selective in what you say. The other thought would be is that your thoughts and your, your words that you speak internally or externally have legs and they go out and they find themselves and they bring them back to you as your reality. So the concept here is that your thoughts and words are containers that hold your future. Therefore, you should be very selective in what you think and what you say out into the world. So that's our second guiding principle. So here's our third one. So let me just put this out there. And it's kind of goes into the same conversation that we just had. And let me see if I can get that into the chat box. It's not letting me. Okay, we're just going to have to write these down. So the third one is that your thoughts and your words have legs, which I just spoke about. And they go out and find themselves and bring them back to you as your reality. So I guess I'm just going to speak about that a little bit further. So I want you to imagine that everything that you speak or think begins to plant itself in the universe. It gets to plant itself in your life. And your job in this is to really be careful of what seeds that you're planting into the world. And that we have this thing that I refer to as called creep. And so imagine that creep is this guy that knocks on your door and says, hey, let me in and I want to thwart everything that you're doing in your life. And the idea would be is that we need to be able to understand that if creep is knocking on your door, you're not going to allow him or it to come into your life. So we all have these creepers in our life that are um, really wanting to get in and derail you. And so it's important that we understand that you know, your thoughts and your words have legs and they go out and find themselves and bring them back to you as your reality. I cannot stress this enough that what you think and what you speak in the world is going to become true for you. So it's super powerful that we do not do this. Okay, so number four, and I want to speak, this is probably one of my favorite ones, and that is when you say one positive thing and then follow up with the negative, you cancel all good and have to start over. Otherwise, what is floating out there is the last thing you said or thought. Now, that's a lot, and I know it. So let's think about this. So when you speak out something positive and then you follow up with a negative, you cancel it. And what's out, what's left out there is nothing. It's what the negative, the last thing that you spoke or you thought. And so it's really important for you to get that we all have creepers in our brain. We all have ants, which are, which stands for automatic negative thoughts. And our job in this is to really stay awake and aware to when we say a positive and then follow up with a negative. And so we don't want what's the last thing we said to be negative because again what's floating out there is the last thing you said or thought so it's really important for us to yes sometimes we have a hard time especially in times like this to you know get into fear and to speak things out that are negative and our job in this is to be able to be aware and awake that I just did it again so my friend Kelly says whoopsie and so we do a whoopsie and we go and we reframe it and we change it and we don't want to allow that to begin to manifest. We have to reframe it into a positive and then begin to move into the possibility of our manifestation. Okay, number five. So number five is that God can dream a bigger dream than you can dream for yourself. So think bigger than your human mind. So think about this. 
If God can dream a bigger dream than you can dream for yourself, we as human beings have this little, tiny, limited belief system in our minds. And it's really important for us to go bigger, to dream more, to reach further, to evolve further. And could you get bigger? And what would that look like? And our work is to always stretch a little bit further because God, universe, spirit really knows that what your true potential is. And we usually dim it down or make it little or reduce it in our mind because we don't think we should dream that big. You know, when I was a kid growing up, my grandmother, who I loved tremendously, grew up in the depression. And whenever I would speak really big things about my life, she would say, who do you think you are? And don't, don't be, get too big for your britches. Life is hard and we'll make do. I remember that very specifically. You will make do. And I never really understood this because I'm a big thinker. I'm a really good manifester. And I know that what I speak out into the universe comes true. And so interestingly enough, her life was full of struggle. And so she was a great example of how um, just making do was her reality. Just getting by was her reality. So our work in this is to really understand that when God can dream bigger than you can dream, so can you, because you are an expression of your higher power. So we want to know that we need to think bigger than our little human mind. Okay, number six. So number six is stay loose to produce. And when you get too specific, you close the doors of possibility. You need to get clear, but leave more wiggle room for more and bigger. So think about the word stay loose to produce. So one of the things that I believe in is that if God can dream a bigger dream than we can dream for ourselves, and we stay loose to produce, what if, just the possibility of what if, if you stayed loose to produce, that the universe, God's spirit, has a bigger plan for you. And if we get too specific in what we want, or what we think we want, what if we said, I say yes to what is ever for my greater and higher good? Now think about that. I say yes to what is ever for my greater and higher good. And so we don't wanna be too specific because I think it's important that we have a goal and we have um, a trajectory or a bullseye of where we want to go in our life or what we wanna manifest in our life. But if we get too specific, what if you miss what's possible over here? What if the universe says, hey, that's a little too small for you. I get where you want to go. But what if I have something bigger on to the left or have something bigger to the right? Or maybe it's behind the thing that you want and that we need to be able to be really clear that we have to stay loose to produce, right? If we're too rigid, like are you so uptight you can't be bent? And so the idea would be, can the universe bend your possibility? Can the universe create more for you than you could possibly imagine for yourself? And so we need to be clear, but we need to leave that wiggle room for more and bigger. And I think that whenever we're speaking out manifestations or mantras that create your manifestation, that we have to be able to really um, always end with, I say yes to joy, happiness, um, financial freedom, ease and grace, a loving relationship, mature love, um, paying off my car, um, being debt free and watch this and more. So when we leave that and more in there, it changes everything because that's not being too specific. Yes, you can manifest and speak and think all those amazing things. But when you say and more, it gives the universe more room to work with you. So it's very, very important for you to really get clear that we need to stay loose to produce. Okay, number seven. So number seven is, this is my favorite, and it's the hardest one for most of us to deal with. And it's this, there are two types of timing. There is your timing and there is divine timing. So which one do you think is going to manifest easier with ease, grace, and flow? 
So I know that a lot of this can push things into action. And yes, you are all powerful manifestors, but sometimes there is your timing and then there's divine timing. And I talked about this last week in my, in my live that we did. And this was really about the idea that sometimes we don't get the things that we want because they're not for our greater and higher good. It's sort of like the universe has corralled you or the universe is putting you into a playpen and saying, you know, I'm only going to allow you to be in this space because I don't want you to um, manifest that yet. It's not for your greater and higher good right now. And sometimes delays or de are, um, delays or um, detours are not necessarily denials. They're just holding patterns for us to um, begin to manifest that in divine timing, not your timing. And so I have to believe that when I have a block or a detour, that that is just not supposed to be right now. And you have to have more, more faith in the universe than, um, than fear. And it's really about, yes, I would like that. Yes, I would like to have that in my life. But what if it's not for your greater and higher good? So it's really, really important that, you know, when we begin to um, want to manifest, we want to manifest with ease, grace, and flow. Okay, number eight. This is a doozy. So this one is an anxious mind will block detour and delay things from manifesting. So think about this. An anxious mind will block detour and delay things from manifesting. So think about that and I'm going to tell you why. It's because God, universe, and spirit cannot use an anxious mind because when you're anxious, you are decreasing your vibration. So if you're constantly in a state of anxiety or a state of fear or a state of lack or a state of unconsciousness or unawareness um, or even the things you're putting in your body, um, if you're um, in a, a lower vibration in your life or you're being surrounded by people that are a lower vibration, these are all things that are going to block and detour you from being able to manifest in your life. And so the Louise Hayes says that we only rise as high as our tribe, right? And so when we begin to um, choose differently and we choose to um, be surrounded and um, inundated and consumed with positivity, and we calm down our anxiousness and we reduce our anxiety and we have the skills and tools that we need to do that, then our vibration rises. And so if you're wondering why you're not manifesting, I would ask yourself to look at what's going on up here. Am I anxious? Am I angst? Am I in fear? And what I believe is that, you know, the universe has this amazing hierarchy and the hierarchy would be is that would imagine that the angels are right above your head and they are the, they are the vehicle that begins to take that, that thing that you want to manifest and be, you give it to your, to your higher vibration or your higher power. And then the angels were going to go from you to your higher power to God, universe, spirit, and then get the order to yes or no you. But it's all depending on can that angel reach you? Can um, the uh, luminaries or whatever you want to call it, can they reach you? Because they are at a higher vibration. And if they can't reach you because your, your vibration is in anxiousness and is anxiety and in high angst, it can't meet your energy. It's kind of like, you know, the angels are up here and you're down here and you miss each other. So when you begin to raise your vibration, and you get closer and you become together and then you melt and you meld. And then that's when you begin to start manifesting things with ease and grace. So this is a very important one because this is about awareness, 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 and staying awake to what's going on in your brain. And so I think it's important that we have skills and we have tools to do this. 
one of the things that works best for me is breathing. And breathing is a beautiful gift and it's free to everybody in the world. It doesn't cost anything, but it does take awareness to stop and to pause and to reflect. And I think it's incre incredibly important for you to have the skills and tools that you need to be able to um, raise your vibration and leave your anxiousness and your fear. And you'll be amazed of how quickly you'll begin to begin manifesting with ease and grace. All right. Okay. Number nine. So number nine is that God, universe, spirit will deliver onto you a bigger and more amazing reality than you could possibly imagine. So let go of your limiting expectations and attachment to limiting outcomes and always think big. So again, this kind of goes into the other one I was talking about, about God can dream a bigger dream than you can dream for yourself. And so, you know, what our job is in this moment is to realize once again, that the universe always thinks bigger than you do. And it's incredibly important for you to always think a little bit bigger and see if you could just rise up a little bit more and to go beyond your limitations. And I think that there's this attachment to limiting expectations and attachment to limiting outcomes. And so your job is to, is to reduce that, to let go of those limiting beliefs, to let go of those almost expectations. And I know that's a weird way of saying it, but you almost like expect to fail, or you almost like expect for this to be hard, or you almost expect yourself to believe that, you know, that's for someone else. I can't do that. And I think that that comes from our generational pathology. It's the people that have raised you that have sort of put that onto you. And it's not even that we're making them wrong. It's that they learned it from somewhere and then they learned it from somewhere and they learned it from somewhere. So as a transformational educator in the world, my job is to wake you up and put a dent in your brain that's permanent and to know that all of those limiting beliefs and all of those limiting expectations that you may have of yourself um, and that, that creep that creeps in and tells you lies and whispers things that are not true, we need to release those and break that pathology and begin to teach our clients and to begin to teach our families and our kids that that's false, that's not true, and that didn't come from a, a truth, that came from a pathology of lack. And so really begin to get that we always need to think bigger. Okay, number 10. Number 10 is be clear with your visions, your words and your thoughts. Say yes and let God work out the when, the where, and the how. Okay, so this is a doozy. So let's say that you're in mode, you've kicked into gear that you're gonna manifest something powerful. And what happens is, is that we, the universe, is waiting for your command because I know for a fact that biblically that there's a biblical uh, verse and I don't know what it is exactly you can look it up and it says God or God can never take away your free will and so if that's true that God can never take away your free will that you have the power to say yes or to say no and so once you begin to get that you choose, you choose to bog down the universal doing machine and how we do it is we get too specific and we need to get that the when, the where, and the how are not your job. That's not your job, the when, where, and how, because that connects back to divine timing versus your timing. And so what I've learned in my journey through manifestation, and I am a really good manifester, is that our work in this is to say yes, listen, to say yes to what it is that we really want in our life and to speak it out with clarity, without a lot of expectations, without a lot of now versus divine timing, and to stop the expectation of when it's going to happen and to say yes. So the universe gets the order. It begins to, uh, going to work for you. It begins to collaborate with you. It begins to move all the parts that need to be moved in your life and to begin to slowly begin to nudge that manifestation into your life. Because there's a lot of details to work out in manifestation. You know, if you're wanting that perfect job, 
maybe somebody's already got that job and maybe they're about ready to go on maternity leave. And if you push it to happen, you wouldn't get the job that you really truly was your highest and greatest good. So we have to know that there's something going on here bigger than you can see. And our work in this is to not worry about the when, where, and how. Again, to speak yes. And we speak it and we open ourselves up to what's possible. And then we wait for divine timing to arrive. So think about that. Okay, lastly, number 10. This is a big one. Do your work. Show up. Go get it. Pay attention when the perfect timing shows up and move your feet. So this is the thing. Show up, show up, show up, show up. We need to pay attention to that divine timing. We need to pay attention to when it's time to act, when it's time to row your boat, when it's time to step up and into the possibility. And that our work in this is to understand that if we don't show up, and this is what happens all the time with a lot of the people in the world. I've been coaching for a long time. And at Seattle Life Coach Training, I teach this to my students, just like I'm teaching it to you now. And that an aha without momentum is worthless. And so if we have an aha or we get the divine order or the our call our marching orders that it's time now to act, then we need to act. And we need to trust that we're stepping into the fog. We don't really know where we're going right now, but I did say yes, I'm getting my marching orders or something happens, that phone call happens, that email happens, an opportunity shows up and we have the ability to be able to say yes or no to that and shut it down immediately. And so we have to step and go into action. We have to move into the possibility. We have to grow our boat and move. We have to continue moving and we don't want to stop. Yes, you might want to pause and reflect and recenter ourselves. And yes, there might be blocks and barriers, but we have to find a way around them. And so our job is, is to keep moving our feet. So one of the things I say is pray and move your feet. And so we pray, but the part that I talked about last week is that we need to pray and meditate. And the meditation is so important because to pray is to ask and to meditate is to listen. And so, yes, we can ask, but once we get our divine download, it's extremely important for us to show up. And it's extremely important for us to go get it and to do the work. And that is paying attention to divine time when it shows up and then moving our feet. Okay, that is my 11 guiding principles to manifestation. And these are the things that work. They're time-tested formulas that I have been working with for over the last you know, 10 years or more. And the thing about manifestation is that you are the producer and the generator of your own life. No one's gonna do it but you. So if you believe in lack, that's gonna be your reality. If you believe in possibility, that's gonna be your reality. We will seed our life with weeds or we're going to seed our life with flowers. And it really depends on how you want to do it. And you are the generator, the producer, the, the, the creator of your own reality. And again, the universe, God's spirit cannot take away your free will. So it really is about you deciding how you want to manifest and what you want to manifest. You know, lack and limitation is man-made. And the universe is always, um, you know, conspiring with you and it wants what's best for you. And so really pay attention and stay awake. And I always say health and awareness is the first step to health and healing. And when we become really aware of what we're thinking and what we're speaking and we reframe it immediately and know that when we start with one positive thing and follow up with a negative, we cancel all good. And that's a huge one. And I think we just want to take one of these guiding principles and begin to work through them and maybe to spend, you know, one day, one, uh, one principle a day and to really begin to work through these things. So I hope that was powerful for you and that you got something out of it. So what I want to do is I want to end with um, saying thank you for being here today. And I see um, quite a few people here today. It's nice to see everybody. Um, thank you for sharing time with me today. But I want to end you, one of the things that you may know is I wrote the book, Spiritual Reliability. 
And I also have a second book called It's All in the Sharing. And if you're interested in going to my website um, and finding out the things that I offer, you may want to go to seattlelifecoachtraining.com. Check it out. See if there's anything that you want to do there. Know that I do mentoring sessions, I do coaching sessions, all kinds of things. And I'm more than happy to support you in how I can. So I want to spend some, just the last moment, because in spiritual reliability, um, I, I teach things in spiritual reliability, and you can find this on Amazon, and you can then read and be taught something really powerful. But I really believe in what I call grounding prayer. And so it's almost like a grounding mantra. It's that thing that will sort of speak into existence and to ground you and anchor you in your truth. And so before I started this live today, I dug through my book and I asked Spirit to guide me to what the perfect grounding prayer might be. So what I want to do with you is I want to spend some time with you in the last moment and I want to read to you a grounding prayer. And the grounding prayer is coming from um, page 40, and actually it's page 54 from the chapter, My Path to God. And it's a really great chapter. It really talks about um, how I reached um, my higher power and how I got to where I needed to go in my life and how I found what I call God, universe, spirit. And that's a whole nother conversation that I'll get into later. And I know we all have that, probably that same story. So I want to just leave you with a grounding prayer that will support your higher and greater good to begin to really anchor you in what's possible and what's true for you. Okay, so here it is. You might want to take a deep breath and just allow this uh, grounding prayer to take you where it needs to go. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath. And let's let this prayer take you where it needs to go. I know there is a power for good which is responding to me and bringing into my experience everything that is necessary for my enfoldment, to my happiness, to my peace, to my health, and to my success. I know there is a power of good that enables me to help others and to bless the whole world. So I quietly say to myself, there is one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. It is flowing through me, circulating in me, and I am with its rhythm. My heart beats with the pulsation of the universe in serenity, in peace, and in joy. My whole physical being is emanated by the divine spirit and if there is anything in it that does not belong, it is cast out because there is one perfect life in me now. And I say to myself, I am guided daily so that I shall know what to do under every circumstance and every situation. Divine intelligence guides me in love and in joy and in complete self-expression desiring that the law of good, the law of manifestation alone, shall control me and bless and prosper everything that I am doing. And I multiply every activity and I accept and expect happiness and complete success. Realizing that I am one with all people and I affirm that there is a silent power flowing through them and me, which blesses and heals and prospers and makes happy and glad on their pathway. And realizing that the world is made up of people just like myself, I bless the world and affirm that it shall come under the divine agreement of good, under the divine providence of love, and under the divine leadership of the supreme intelligence, for that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever, amen, and so it is. So that is actually a prayer from this amazing book called The Science of Mind, and it's the teachings of Ernest Holmes. 
And I want to really invite you, if you want to go back into this live and let that be your truth and to know that you are divinely guided by something greater than yourself. That's your higher power. Whatever your God of understanding is, I just ask you to really connect to it and to really know that God, universe, spirit is moving through you and all around you. And there is no place that God is not. And our job in this is to really spend some time, if you can, every day, and to know that there is no place that God is not, and that your work in this is to ground down to this powerful truth, and to know that in any given moment you have an anchor, and that is the anchor of love, the anchor of possibility, the anchor of facing everything in rise, hanging out with the wrong, the right people, increasing your vibration, and knowing that everything is good, everything is possible, and it's all about what we choose to do. Are we gonna think it? Are we gonna say it? Are we gonna do it? And so our job is to think it, say it, do it, move through the what's possible in your life, and to you know that you are divinely guided in all things. So I leave you today with this mantra, and it's this, all is well in all things, and that includes me, that includes you, in every part of your life. So again, I'm Richard Seaman, transformational educator, founder and director of Seattle Life Coach Training, and the author of two books, Spiritual Reliability, and it's all in the sharing. It was a pleasure to speak with you today and spend some time with you. And I hope that that created value in your life. And I will see you next week for my next live. Blessings and namaste.